We're now going to take a look at simplifying radicals. So when you have a case like what's going on over here, you see we have a square root that has this big fraction in it, right? Well, one of the properties we have with square roots is that we can take this radical and actually break it up over the division. So I can break this up as square root of 10 over square root of 9. And now we just take a look and see, can we simplify either of these? Well, we know square root of 10. Let's take a look at the factor tree for 10. That's 2 and 5, right? Nothing's coming out of there. These are the prime factorization. So um, on top, this is just going to stay square root of 10. And then um, there's a couple ways you can look at this. You might look at the square root of 9 and immediately know, oh, the square root of 9 is 3. Um, if you're not really good with your square roots yet, still working on that, we know we can do a factor tree, and that 9 is 3 times 3, right? And when you have 2 of anything underneath a square root, we know 1's coming out. So the square root of 9 is just going to be... 3, again, it comes, kind of what happens here is we have the square root of 3 squared right here, and then we can bring that 3 out. There's nothing left underneath the radical, so we just have a 3. And this is going to be our final answer here. So we just broke it up into two fractions. Um, this is called rationalizing the denominator, too. You see that we no longer have a radical in the denominator. That's going to be useful for us for some other problems later. But really, all we're going to do is we're just going to try to split that up and simplify it. So let's go down here and take a look at this one right here. It says the cube root of 3g over 8r to the ninth. So we're going to do the same trick, and we're going to try to split this up. So it's going to be cube root of 3g divided by cube root of 8r to the ninth. Um, again, we try to simplify. Uh, take a look at the numerator. 3 is already a prime factor, and g, there isn't 3 of anything underneath this radical. So I think the top, just like before, that's going to stay exactly as it did. 3g. Don't forget your cube root there. So we have 3g on top, and then on the bottom, this is where we can simplify some stuff. I'm going to scoot over a little bit. Um, so first we'll take a look at 8. We know 8 is 2 and 4. 4 is 2 and 2, right? So what do we have up in the top? You see, now we have a cube root. We need three of something. So this would become um, two to the third r to the ninth. And just, I want to kind of emphasize this. Our trick here for doing this is take a look. If we have an exponent divisible by three, we can divide it and bring it out. So here, um, we divide three by three, and that's going to give us what? It's just going to give us two to the first power in the denominator. So, and then I know that does not look like a 9. That is r to the ninth. So we divide 9 by 3, and so we bring out an r to the third. Again, nothing to simplify on the top, so that's our final answer. It's going to be cubed root of 3g over 2r to the third. Again, take a look. I did rationalize the denominator. There's no more radicals in the denominator. Now going down to these problems, up, up here you take a look and you see that we had uh, one big fraction that we then split up into two. Well, if you're given a situation where we're given two fractions, all we're going to do is we're going to go backwards now, and we're going to put those all underneath one square root. So this is going to be square root of 48 over 6. And then let's think about it. Can I simplify 48 over 6? I divide 48 by 6 in my calculator, and we get... 8. And now I'm going to try to simplify 8. So 8 is going to be 2 and 4, which is 2 and 2. So if you have 2 of something, you can bring 1 out. So you can see when we simplify this, we're going to bring a 2 out and take a look. I still have this 1, 2. That one is a leftover, so that, that is going to be left over underneath the square root. So we end up with 2 radical 2 is the answer to this one. Okay, we're going to take a look at one more down here. Um, I totally messed up this problem when I wrote it down, so uh, I'm going to recopy this with the correct problem. Let's make it 15 square root of 48a to the 7th divided by 5 square root of 2a to the 2nd. Okay. Um, this is going to work out a lot nicer for us if we just work with this one. So um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this 15 and 5 out front. Those are just whole numbers. We're gonna, we can divide those, right? 
And so we're going to kind of break those off to the side. So I'm just going to put them kind of in their own fraction over here, and we're going to kind of take these off to the side, and we'll deal with those later. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to take 48a to the 7th over 2a to the 2nd. These are two different radicals, just like what we did in this first example. We're going to try to write them under one big one. So we're going to kind of take the radicals off to the side, and we're going to work with those. And that's going to give us 48a to the 7th over... 2a to the second. All right. So now what we're going to do here is take a look at the fraction. Can we simplify this fraction? Yeah. 15 over 5 is what? 15 over 5 is just going to give us 3. And then we're going to take a look inside this fraction and see if we can divide this at all. So 48 divided by 2 is 24, right? So 48 divided by 2 is 24, and then a to the seventh divided by a to the second. Remember, we subtract those exponents. That's going to give us a to the fifth. Now, all that's left to do, we've simplified radicals like this before. Can we simplify square root of 24, a to the fifth? Yeah, let's make a factor tree for 24. So we know that 24 is 2 and 12. 12 is 2 and 6. 6 is 2 and 3. So now let's go ahead and I'll do this a long way. You can take a look, and we know we're going to bring some twos out, but we'll write this kind of the, the longhand form. So what's the prime factorization of 24? It's going to be 2 to the third. Then we have a 3, and we also have an a to the fifth. Now, underneath the square root, we are looking for exponents that are divisible by 2, right? So take a look at this one. That's not divisible by 2, but we can break it up. So I'm going to make a pile of stuff that's going to come out. We're going to bring out a 2 squared, right? And then we're going to have a 2 in our leftover pile. We'll make this our leftover pile. We know that 3 is also, we cannot bring that out, so that's going to be in the leftover pile. Finally, a to the fifth, a to the fifth is not divisible, that 5 is not divisible by 2, but we're going to break this up into a to the fourth times a over here. So now we're ready to bring some stuff out. What comes out is going to be right here. So what comes out is, remember, when we bring it out, we divide the exponent by the index, which is 2, since this is a square root. So it's going to be 3 times, we bring out a 2 to the first, and we're also going to bring out an a to the second. And then what's left over, 2 times 3 is 6a. So we just combine these right here, and that's how we got our 6a. Uh, last thing to clean this up a little bit is we're going to multiply those, and so our final answer is going to be 6 a squared, square root of 6a.